Hey beauties, good evening to you. You know, I'm smiling beautiful people. You know, when I was watching the news earlier, you know, this evening, <laughs> the reporter was able to get a, a, a sort of long-winded conversation with, I call him, maybe I should say infamous, <laughs> because, why, um, unfortunately, his name has been quite stained over the years. Um, even though he has, a, you know, a large supporter um, so, sorry, a large support system or a large following, I should say. And that's the infamous Everald Warmington. Um, you know, I, there, I wasn't going to comment so much on his uh, interview. You know, um, I don't know. I said to myself, it seems as if he took a little sedative to deal with the reporters today because he was as... He was very calm, but he was very, in a sense, calm and composed. Let us put it in comparison to the many to the different times at the reporters, because I was very shocked to see that he was able to speak to them for longer than one minute. You know, I was very, very, very surprised to say the least, you know, um, that they were able to. And even he said, you know, when they asked him if he had resigned, he said, no, I was fired. And he went on and... um you know, was explaining, you know, I think somebody was trying to liken his comment with Dennis Meadows' comment. He said, no, 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 you can't compare the two. You know, basically he would say that his is more unethical and wise versus the man was pushing criminality, which he does have a point in that. He does have a strong point in that, you know. You wouldn't consider him having some legal ramifications. And as, as I was saying, an inference can be made because he made a statement and said, my money. He could argue that he really was talking about his personal money as opposed to government's money. But he said something very fundamental. In other words, he was saying, you know, Mount McFe chat. And he was asking even Minister Vaz, Zahra Vaz, you know, can any, can any MP basically impede, create a hindrance to monies that are allocated for local government issues stop that in other words he's saying that you know you should know better that it could not happen um but you know they always have to be careful how you put you shoot yourself in the leg or you put your foot in your mouth even though it may not it literally cannot happen but for the mere fact you know you make certain utterances it can hinder you from going further in life. That is why, I mean, I can use it in the positive and the negative. Your attitude determines your altitude. You know, you have the, the people in the underworld who on the basis of having a negative attitude, they get promoted. That's the reality of life. We have to keep it real, you know, but also in the, we are talking the, uh, let's call it, since you have the underworld, let us say the above world, you know, when they say it's above board, your good attitude consistently will determine you going very high and soaring like an eagle, you know. But Ms. Minister Wamington said something that I have to, you know, I, I wish many of us would employ because, listen to me, no human is all bad. You know, you have pros and cons. It's just that, unfortunately, with some human beings because of broken, of being very broken, the, the cons outweigh the pros, unfortunately. But not, we are, no human is all bad, just as so we are not all good. But he said something that, you know, one of the things with me, you know, I don't say anything behind your back. I speak it to your face. And what do you call disrespectful? And the reason why I'm touching on that, you know, beautiful people, not withstanding, I'm not speaking as it relates to Everett Warmington per se. I'm just talking otherwise in general. I find that when people speak truth, again, not speaking as it relates to Everett Warmington. I don't want people to say that I'm sanctioning in his behavior. No. I'm speaking overall now. I'm using something that he said to make this point. That when we speak truth, and I'm talking about people who genuinely speak truth in love, and in love doesn't mean my voice has to be squeaky and dowdy and low. Um, it means that I exhibit compassion because it, mean, it, it, it tells a story that I too can falter. But I want you to raise, to, to go higher. But I'm not condemning you. I'm only trying to make you better. That is what Jesus did with the woman who was caught in the act of adultery and the, also the other, she was the other one at the well. Here was an adulterous woman. Said there are five husbands and the one that you live in me with is not your own. There are two different women, you know. Mary Magdalene would be like a prostitute. So he got the women, them who, you know, their lifestyle really was, it left most, much to be desired. And I'm saying, you know, we, we have normalized hypocrisy. 
we have normalized fake, we have normalized false, we have normalized being pretentious. There are many people who they think that the people are in their corner and they're not. Because they feel, most times people don't speak the truth because they don't want any more contention. They don't want to feel like, oh my God, I'm not going to be in this league anymore. They're going to treat, isolate me and I'm going to feel away. Or they're going to get people against me. I'm going to lose money. So many different reasons, you know. And it is because of a sort of a weak state of mind. Not being confident in who the individual is. In other words, you don't fear those things. Don't, they're not the only people in life. God can bring destiny helpers and good friends and so on your way. Once you know that what you have done is right, you can match it against the word of God. We don't like truth. We don't like truth. Somebody was sharing with me that they have this friend, his mouth smells very bad. Stink, himself, stink. And and I said, because a person is thin-skinned, they can't speak. They not of it literally cannot but you know what I mean. They're afraid to speak the truth. And I said to myself, you know, that's unfortunate. Because he's not going to run around. He knows a job is going to be going around with a bad breath. And people are going to say, you mean to tell me he has no friends? In other words, whether or not he's thin-skinned, he must learn how to get tough-skinned. Not even though, let me tell you something. A lot of things, we, as you get older, you have to become tougher to battles. When you were a baby, you remember your mother or, or your father, or your guardian fed you with a baby bottle, hushed you and nursed you as you get older, they throw it at, you're on your own. So in other words, the right thing to do, even though it may be uncomfortable, is somebody to go to him, not disrespectful and say, your mouth stink. Hmm? I wonder your breath in, I brush your teeth, whatever it is. Say, all right, something seems to be off. I don't know if it's a health issue. I don't know if you don't have this, whatever it is, talk to me. Let me know because I want, I don't want people to be running from you because your mouth, you know, has an odor. That's not good. If they're upset with you, you don't worry about it. The blood is not on your shoulder. In time to come, it will play back. Or when that person experiences life in a different way, then they say, you know, this person meant me well. This person meant me well. They saved me from fiery hell, so to speak. So in Warmington said that, and when he said, what do you call disrespect? And you know, I like when he said that because people who are extroverted like me and we speak truth and we are strong, we're strong in our personality. It can often be mis misunderstood. And when we speak and you hear that power comes out, you may think that we're being disrespectful, but generally sometimes they're not, you know, maybe even in defense of poor Warmington, maybe that's how he is. And he's in his mind, if you come to him with something that he considers nonsensical, and baseless and weightless because of his personality and where he's at and at his age you know, remember so when you reach a certain age you, you, your miserableness tear it no move he probably said to himself what kind of madness you come what kind of nonsense you come here with me and i'm not saying that he's not facetious by putting up his finger and all kinds of things don't get me wrong but what do you really call disrespect be is it because of his voice or how he because somebody can be very, they can speak monotone very low and let me tell you, the disrespect is even more pronounced. It is sinister even. So what do you really call disrespect? Because sometimes when truth is being given, and again, I'm not talking about where I'm being callous and cold and deliberately there is some kind of ill motive behind what I'm saying. Sometimes in many instances when truth is spoken, people will say you're disrespectful. The Pharisees could have said that about Jesus when he said you whitewashed sepulchers. You fake like and you false. Hey, Jesus never ran with them. And, and, and I don't think he spoke with his voice squeaky and squeezed. He was firm, respectful. So what do you call disrespect though? You know, he made a good point. Again, I'm not saying that he's not disrespectful at times. I mean, to put up your middle finger. Come on, that's, that, that, that's, that gesture is, is definitely out, out of order. You know? Because people like us have been accused of that. And in your head, you're saying, huh? But that is not even my motive. You know? That's not my motive. Sometimes, let me tell you, I'm not saying that, you know, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. That is very key. But sometimes we don't like to hear truth. Beautiful people, if we check it, we don't like to hear truth. We have basked in this fairy tale lifestyle, this fake and false. You are almost be hunky door. That's not reality. That's not life. Truth, let's make truth great. 
Again, guys, follow me on TikTok. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please share this message. Thanks.